Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Seb, you're watching Upside Lens. And first, straight off the bat, I just want to uh, thank all of you guys who have subscribed so far. We've gone past, I think, the 200 mark already and what, we've four or five videos. Uh, that's incredible, so thank you so much, guys. Keep it going, obviously. If you haven't subscribed, just, you know, give it a cheeky subscribe. That would help me a lot. Now, this is going to be my last video of the year and to finish 2023 with a bang, I thought I'd do a little roundup, a little summary of all the accessories that I use and recommend. So if you haven't put your uh, Santa Christmas list, your wish list just yet, do it. <laughs> so all the products that I'll be talking about today will be listed down in the description. And without further ado, let's get going. So to get things started, this is not an accessory as such, it's the phone itself. Now, I've said it before, the reason why I highly recommend the Xperia 1 Mark V is because of a various amount of uh, things, like you know the shutter button, which is a big thing, the, the, the processing, or the lack of processing rather, the colors, the versatility, and at the end of the day, um, the, the phone's now come out uh, back in June, July uh, this year. So it's been out for a while and it can be had for, for quite a good deal nowadays. I think if you uh, go on, you know, Amazon, eBay, you'll find it very affordable prices. And the results that you can get with the, the cameras on this, uh, on this phone are absolutely insane. I mean, I'll put a few examples here but uh, from my previous videos, but from the tiny little sensors that you get in this phone, it's absolutely amazing what you can actually get. So I highly recommend the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V. Now, the first accessory that I highly recommend for anyone using this phone as a camera alternative is the filter adapter, the controversial filter adapter. Yep, okay. Um, we have breaking news. There have been reports all over the internet that a certain breed of self-proclaimed vigilantes will attack on site anyone using a filter on their mobile phone devices, claiming they should be using a proper camera if they start using a filter. Now, jokes aside, guys, don't let anyone tell you you can't do this or that. If you want to use filters with your phone, be it. It's your phone, it's your life. Do what you want to do with it, okay? So by buying one of these, which is the PowerRig Mac filter, um, it allows you to attach filters to your phone. And some people will tell you, if you start putting a filter on your phone, you might as well use a proper camera, you know? But my argument to this is, yes, of course, a mirrorless camera and a DSLR will give you much better results than your mobile phone will, but at what cost, you know? By the time you've added lenses like a prime lens, a couple of prime lenses, you know, a zoom lens, high, a high quality filters, tripods, um, a gear equipment bag, you're looking at thousands. I mean, literally thousands, let alone the price of the camera itself, the body alone. <laughs> so, you know, when you've got a phone in your pocket, the size, a quarter of the size of a, a big, massive camera, at the end of the day, I think there's a hell of a difference <laughs> in terms of weight, in terms of price, and in terms of life as well, you know. It's not everyone that can afford going out on a, on a family trip with all the gear locked on your, on your back, you know. Some people just want to, don't want to hassle anymore. They just want to get on with their hobby, go with a phone, but they also want the quality, hence having a phone and using a filter on it. So if you ask me, no problem whatsoever with that. So the way that you use this filter is really easy. It comes, um, I would show you on the phone, but obviously I'm filming with the phone. So this little uh, filter adapter here comes with a magnet at the back. So what I've done, I bought a really cheap uh, case on uh, Amazon, a little silicon case. Um, that filter comes with a magnet that you apply on the case itself. So I've glued this so it doesn't go anywhere because um, it comes with a little um, 3M strip. So if you glue it to a case, at least, you know, it's going to stay there. And when you need to use your filters, just pop this case on, job done. And the way that the filter goes, you pop it on there and it's aligned properly. To make things a lot easier, you have a little guide. Sorry, I'm very unprepared and I haven't got my little guide. Where is it? There it is. To pre prep your case, to start with, you get a little guide here and it will uh, tell you where to put a magnet. There you go. So you pop your little guide here and then you've got to make sure that you align the lens, the, the, the cutout of the actual uh, filter mount to make sure that you don't crop any of the um, wide angle and the zoom lens. So once it's done, then it'll literally align to the case every single time 
very easily. And then it's a 67 uh, millimeter uh, filter thread. So from there, you can buy any 67 millimeter filter that you want and it will adapt to the case in a snap, literally. So we'll talk about the filters in a minute that you can use with it. But yeah, highly, highly recommend. Again, I'll show you again. Uh, it'll be listed in the description, but it's the PowerRig Mac filter. At number two, the, the accessory that I highly recommend is a phone case because, you know, you've got to protect your investment. And I highly recommend the Sony one, the official one. I've tried a few cases and they're either too bulky or the uh, shutter button is kind of um, hidden behind like a, a little recess that doesn't allow you to half press properly. So basically this one is the best of both worlds. It protects your phone. It's not one of those cases that will, you know, if you throw the, the, the phone down the staircase, it will survive. It probably won't. But you know, it will just hand, it will handle the, the daily uh, wear and tear basically, okay? So this one comes with a little stand at the back. So I don't know if you can see it properly, but you've got a little stand that allows you to put, to pop and to prop your phone on the side and it will just uh, stay there whilst you're watching a bit of YouTube or you know playing a game or whatever you want to do with it. But very good quality uh, case and the back of it is the same texture grip that you get on the back glass of the phone which I thought was a really nice touch. Now, I know there's about a gazillion cases, phone cases out there for uh, mobile phones, but when we're talking about the Sony Xperia phones, there's not actually that many. And I mean, you can look about, and mostly the ones that you'll find are either too bulky, like I said, or not particularly uh, practical in terms of um, camera use. So yeah, definitely recommend this one, guys. Not the cheapest one you can find, but definitely one of the best. Since we're on the subject of protecting your phone, Item number three that I highly recommend is a screen protector. So why did I pick the Spigen Alignmeister? Well, I've tried, again, a lot of different uh, screen protectors and some of them will have that kind of like sticky kind of, you know, resistance to your finger, especially the plastic ones. So for me, it had to be a glass one. That, that, that was a given. Uh, but then some of them will kind of not be smooth to the touch and some of them will um, kind of like um, make the scrolling harder for some reason. This one is absolutely perfect. And again, I've tried a lot and I've come to the conclusion that this one was the best. It also comes with a little uh, um, screen adapter there. So when you pop your, your screen on the phone, um, it won't, you won't get all the bubbles everywhere and that, that little plastic cradle kind of thing allows you to apply your screen protector absolutely spot on. So I highly recommend this one. Again, you can find the link in the description, but um, it comes as a two pack as well. So if you happen to break the first one, at least you've got a, sec a spare second one. Plus, uh, as of here, I haven't got a single micro scratch because they actually drive me insane. You know, those little type of scratches that when you're in the sun, you look at your screen, you got see like tiny, tiny little scratches. They drive me insane. But on this one, so far, fingers crossed, I have got a single one. So job well done there, Spigen. Spigen, Spigen? I don't know, guys. I'll say Spigen. Um, but yeah, highly recommend these screen protectors. Now, moving on to filters. I happen to have three different filters in my pouch and um, I've also purchased a new one, but I haven't yet used it. So as soon as I start using it, you'll probably see it in the photos, okay? But the first one I highly recommend is the variable ND filter. And what that basically does is reduces the, the, the amount of light, I don't know if you guys can see, the amount of light that goes through the filter and that is essential when you try to lower your shutter speed. So let's say you're trying to do a, a panning shot of someone uh, in, in broad daylight. Um, the problem is to have the smooth kind of a blur at the back, you have to lower your shutter speed. But if you lower the shutter speed, you let a lot more light in, hence wanting to control your light. And this is exactly what this does. So as you uh, increase the uh, the darkening effect, then it will um, reduce the amount of light and then you can go on lower shutter speeds. So again, that's ideal also if you want to shoot videos when you have to have a set ISO and a set, uh, and, uh, that's a mouthful, and a set shutter speed. Um, again, this one is the uh, Neware, Neware, there you go, I'll show you the box as well. The new Neware variable ND filter two to 32. Um, to me, again, it's essential, but it's essential in combination with another one, the ND Filter 1000. 
Now, you're probably thinking, hang on a minute, I'm sure I've seen ND filters variable ones that go to, from two to 2,000. And the reason why I've got two different uh, ND filters is because the ones that tend to go the whole range, two to 1,000 or 2,000 or whatever, they tend to have a flaw, a major flaw, which basically causes a big X, a big cross across your, your frame. And that's just purely due to the nature of the beast, which is when you cross the filters, um, there, will, uh, there will be a, a time where you'll see an X in the middle of your photo. To avoid that from happening, you go for a low variable ND filter, like I did with the ND2 to uh, 32, and then a separate one, a higher one, like this one, the ND1000. Again, that's a near filter. And what this one, what uh, used are, uh, of this filter I'll do is, when I want to do a, um, I don't know, let's say I'll put a photo up actually on the screen. If I want to do a long exposure, let's say a 20 second or a 30 second exposure, and if I want to smooth out, I don't know, a waterfall or the sea or a river, and you want to make it look like glass, like really highly reflective and no ripples or anything, what you tend to do is leave the shutter speed, uh, the, the shutter open for a lot longer. And when you do that, again, you've got a lot of light coming in. And to prevent that from happening and ruining your photo, you need one of those. Then my last filter is the KNF diffusion or black mist filter. Granted, this one is not for everyone, but it really gives a nice look to your photos. Normally, if I didn't do this video, I would have the black mist actually put on the screen here, which tends to diffuse the harsh light of my uh, ambient light and the lights behind me. And the purpose of it is, um, I don't know, if you're doing some night photography and you've got some um, uh, street lights, it kind of gives you that glow effect and uh, it does reduce a bit the amount of detail that you get out of your photos. So that's why uh, there, there are plenty of types of diffusers. You've got the uh, half point, you've got the uh, one fourth and the one eighth. The one I've got is the one eighth, uh, I believe. Yeah, the one eighth. I don't know if you can see it here but it's the one with the least amount of diffusion, which will give you clearer photos with um, more detail rather than the uh, uh, one fourth and the uh, and a half um, stop. But yeah, highly recommend this one if you want to, to create that kind of moody kind of uh, feel to your photos, especially again at night time, or if you're doing some portrait shoots and you want to do a nice smooth roll off the highlights on, the, on someone's face. Um, again, give it a go. Um, I'll leave the, the link in the description. It's a KNF black mist diffusion filter. So we talked about doing some long exposures with the filters, but you're probably thinking, hang on a minute, if I'm doing a 30 second exposure, how the hell am I supposed to hold my camera still for so long? Well, that's when this little baby comes in handy. That's the Joby GorillaPod tripod, and they come in so many different sizes and shapes. Uh, well, I mean shape, they all come, come in as uh, that kind of bandy kind of um, design but it's extremely handy for a lot of situations because you can, one, you can wrap it around a tree branch. Let's say you want to do a self uh, portrait and you want to put it a little bit further away. You put it on a branch, put a timer on, you take the picture, but you can also put it stable on the side and it'll stay there because it's really grippy, really rubbery. And I am aware that you can find a lot cheaper ones on eBay, on Amazon. They are copies, little fakes. Um, but they tend to kind of break really easily for a start, but they're also kind of very fiddly and yeah, they, they, they will break, believe me, I've been there. <laughs> so always go back to the good old jobby one because the jobby ones are, they do last, okay? They can take a bit of beating and they last and they come with um, a phone uh, grip as well, depending on the one that you go with. But yeah, highly recommend those if you, especially if you do some long exposure photos. Now, since I've recommended all those filters and I said, get this filter and that filter and that filter, you're thinking, well, hang on a minute, that's a lot of boxes to carry with me and if it's the point of shooting with a mobile phone in the first place, well, that's when this, this uh, little baby comes in handy as well. Little pouch, really thin. You can stick in your jacket pocket or in your trousers pocket and basically what it does, it holds your filters in place, okay? And it's really handy because it's orange so you can actually see the, the lenses inside. 
And yeah, it won't hold three lenses. You've got bigger ones on the internet, um, yes, but they come in a much bulkier form. So I think three, because I've got three filters at the moment, is more than enough uh, for me. And you, make, you can make sure that obviously your lenses don't get scratched, don't get broken. And yeah, nice and easy, pop that in your pocket and you're done. So again, that will be listed in the description. This particular one is the iGadgets. <laughs> but I mean, there, there are so many out there. Just um, look for the, the ones that's probably the most kind of um, form factor wise, the most handy to you. And talking about pouches, this one actually came with the power rig magnet filter. And you can obviously carry uh, two lenses with this one. So I've got two lenses in this one, two filters, my bad. And you can pop your uh, the magnetic filter adapter in there as well and carry it with you. So you can either take the other pouch. So this one, you can either take this one with you or that one, or you can have both if you wanted to as well. Now, my last recommendation is a very cheap one, okay? And I'll show it to you. I don't know if it'll come out really uh, great on the camera, but I'll pop a picture on the screen just in case. But it's these. I don't know if you can see. They're little adapters, little plugs that you pop on your phone. So the first one, it looks like a, a bit of an earring, but it's not an earring. It's the uh, to protect your 3.5 mil jack adapter so no water or dust can get in. And the second one is the USB-C um, plug. So you pop one on each side and then at least you can be sure that when you go shooting in the sun or on the beach, you don't get any sand or any water going inside your phone. Um, mine though, you know, I, I, disclaimer, it's not 100% guarantee. It has got seals on it, so you know, you never know. It's got little rubber seals on it. But at least it puts your, uh, your mind at ease. And those are really, really, really cheap and you can find them on eBay, Amazon. And if I do find the link, I'll, again, I'll put it in the description, guys. But very essential to me, I think, especially when I go out shooting and it's chucking it down, it's raining, hammering it down. This, I know, at least I know that my jack is not gonna get soaked in water. <laughs> well, that's it for my little roundup. But if you guys have got, must have like essentials that I forgot to talk about, please do uh, comment down in the comment section and let me know what you guys rock on your phones. But, you know, we could have talked about cables, battery chargers, um, phone cases in general, uh, bags, external lights, external microphones. But I just wanted to keep it more in line of photography because that's what this channel is all about. Mobile phone photography, <laughs> not videography or, you know, or sound mixing or whatever. So I, I'm aware there's a lot more accessories that you can use with the phone but they're the ones that I could, on top of my head, think of. So again, if you guys can think of anything else, please do leave it in a comment and um, I'll have a look. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to keep it short, sweet and simple. And uh, I'll see you again, uh, beginning of January, 2024, New Year. Yay! <laughs> so if you haven't done so yet, make sure you do subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, make sure you like it. Um, helps with the algorithm, as you know. And uh, you can also find me on Instagram and Reddit. If you haven't joined the Reddit group, I highly recommend this for uh, really nice people, a lot of info as well. And if you've got any issues whatsoever, there's a lot of people out there that can you know, help you out. So again, those two, I'll link them up there. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, I've got plenty more coming in 2024. I've got more POVs, I've got tutorials, and I've got some secret stuff as well in the background going on, but which will all be revealed if it goes ahead with it. But yeah, there's so so much to, to go into. Even my microphone is getting stuck now. Oof, getting all the excitement here. So thanks again for watching, guys. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and I'll see you in the new year. Bye.